Hi, I'm Doug, the designated pilot. And I'm Daniel, the flight engineer. I was in charge of starting and regulating the engine. This video documents how we achieved the Canadian Control Line Endurance record in May 2016. The objective of the Control Line Endurance event is to fly a model airplane so that it remains in the air for the greatest period of time. Basic rules are, two-stroke engine size is 15 to 36, four-stroke is 25 to 60, gross weight limit is 64 ounces, fuel must be in wings, fuselage, or pods, one pilot, no pit stops, no refueling in flight, control line speed rules also apply, allowing one person to start and regulate the engine and a designated pilot to fly the plane. We started in March 2016 by selecting an engine. Because of the four pound gross weight limit, the weight of the engine was very important. We bench tested the Brodak 15, which we found was too thirsty, the OS 25, which was too heavy, and finally selected the OS 15 with RC throttle. To simulate the 2.5 G centrifugal force on the fuel load, we held the fuel tank at various heights. We found the difference in fuel pressure between full fuel and almost empty to be intolerable, either too rich with full fuel or too lean when almost empty. This problem disappeared once we connected muffler pressure to the fuel system. In order to test the engine in flight, Daniel built a junior ringmaster from Brodak. We would use its 172 square inch wing area to determine how much weight could be lifted. After our initial test flight, we realized the fuel tanks had to be inside pods. So my dad built a main pod for 16 ounces and a header pod for 2 ounces of fuel. We used an RC receiver and servo to operate the throttle to reduce power and fuel consumption in flight. It was also obvious that our stock landing gear was inadequate for the weight and rough conditions of our flying circle, so I added a spreader bar and crafted some custom wheels out of light ply. We had no intention of making a bona fide record attempt with our junior ringmaster test bed, but our club president Chris Brownhill encouraged us to sanction a day, so we did. We set an initial record of 1 hour, 6 minutes, and 6 seconds. We knew that to make a serious endurance record attempt, we would have to scratch build a plane for that purpose. We consulted at length with Jack Humphreys of A&J Hobbies. Jack is an accomplished aviation engineer and expert modeler. We spent many hours at A&J talking with Jack, weighing, and selecting the wood to use. We started by downloading an airfoil from the internet and then drew up these plans. We tried different wheel diameters and gear heights to give us an acceptable angle of attack on takeoff. Tank mounts were designed with a small angle to throw the fuel to the back of the tank. At first I hated the idea of cutting out my own ribs, but it was easy. I carved two identical rib templates from 1 8 inch plywood and then sandwiched layers of 1 16th balsa between them. I then whittled and sanded the balsa down to the plywood. The last bit was done with 220 grit, which had little effect on the plywood templates. The bell crank was double mounted for a possible 40 pound pull test. The real difficulty was how to hold the model for the test since all other components were optimized for weight and not strength. The solution was to install a second double bell crank mount on the outboard wing, but without the bell crank. This allowed a screwdriver to be used as a handle during the pull test. Since the spars were spruce, I estimate we would have survived a 100-pound pull test. Short torsion gear was installed at the leading edge for strength and rigidity, and improvements to the light ply wheels were made, covering them with microlite to make them more aerodynamic. The fuel tanks were offset mounted directly to the wing so that the fuselage didn't have to bear any of the weight and the fuel would be forced to the back corner of the tanks. Two main tanks and a header tank were plumbed together and are centered directly above the plane's center of gravity. We weren't sure of the finished weight, so we designed for three different header tanks of 6, 4, and 2 ounce capacity. The header tank was also offset in its housing. A check valve was installed in the muffler pressure line to stop the tanks from draining. The fuselage was constructed using perimeter formers made of light ply. This allowed clear access to the fuselage interior from front to back. We needed this access because we weren't sure where the receiver battery would be located, and its location is used to balance the plane. The plane was covered in microlite rather than dope to save weight. We had two random colors of black and yellow which reminded Daniel of a bumblebee, so that's how it was decorated. As the flight engineer, it was my job to regulate the engine, which I did using the radio-controlled throttle. 
It was essential for me to keep the plane at minimum power after takeoff in order to conserve fuel. The fore-aft balance of the plane was ideal, so the receiver and battery are mounted halfway out the outboard wing. No other tip weight was necessary. We used an adjustable lead-out guide so that we could control the plane's yaw and line tension depending on the weather encountered on the day we flew. On May 21st, 2016, we got up early and packed loads of stuff in the car. We couldn't have known this when we built the Bumblebee, but the circle at Centennial Park was paved two days before our record attempt, making our landing gear precautions unnecessary. We had perfect weather and we set up a shade canopy for the officials. The process of checking the line length, doing the pull test, fueling the plane, and weighing in took 45 minutes. Down a smiling face. Yeah. Good luck. You need to work with small parts when you're finishing it. And when you're at Nowski Spitfire. Oh Seven inches high horns. Three fuel tanks. And one. We, we practiced this last night. You practiced? Fueling it, yeah, for the first time and found out that the tanks are each and out smaller than they say on the box. Well, the, yeah, I don't. We I just thought it was. Editors. I just thought it was funny that. We'll write an article. We'll write an article. Yeah, that's what I want. We used Omega 25% Nitro Glow Fuel. Let's see if like we can some... get this in now. Okay. I don't know how I've managed yeah, the all... string oh, over. Everything's connected up, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> okay, if you don't have fun, it wasn't fun. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to have to take some. Total weight can't be more than right. four pounds fuel. It's going to be two more. Too, too much The fuel, uh, too much but weight. the full test heavy. is based yeah. on the empty yeah. weight. Amused and had a great sense of humor, but she didn't well, think that it looked regal. At this point, the bumblebee is fueled and ready to fly. All right. You better go for a wee. Let's get this on the circle. Do you need a drink of water first, Doug? No. Can you change pilot? No. No, it has to be one pilot. It has to be one pilot. Transmitter's on. Okay, in the name of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, I declare the circle open. Her Majesty Queen Victoria. The one that near the last dome was the one with Georgia. They're pretty The takeoff was much easier than I had anticipated, no doubt due to the large wing area and smooth circle. There were other club members wanting to fly, so I relinquished the paved circle and walked over to the grass circle while Daniel maintained full power. When my dad signaled, I took up my position in the circle and got comfortable in my Crazy Creek camping chair. The rest of the flight was just lap after lap, straight and level, as I kept reducing power to a target lap time of about 7 seconds. Okay, so this is lap 628, and the record has been smashed. Smashed to smithereens! The Bumblebee has a low wing design with the fuel held well above the bell crank and lead outs. This is exactly what you want. Although hard to see on the video, the high center of gravity causes the plane to roll away from the pilot, keeping the control lines tight.
the wind got a bit gusty, making it hard to match engine power to wind conditions. <laughs> oh. I bet it stops eventually. Okay, we're at 2 hours and 16 minutes and 1,230 laps. That little buzzy bumblebee is not going to fall out of the sky. So I'm going to have to have a separate set of lines. 2 hours 20, 1,272 laps. <laughs> Keep flying, little bee. Keep flying. I bet him it wouldn't go too long. I think Daniel's gone to sleep. Here we go, here we go. No. Oh my god. Come on, Douglas. Learn that plane. Here we go. Alright, stop. Watch it. Two hours, 26 minutes, 58 seconds. Two hours, 26 minutes, 58 seconds. 1,339 laps. <laughs> <laughs> refuel, refuel. Let's see how much fuel we've got left. Have you not had the lid off yet? Nope. Should Denny. This is dry. Ball and dry? Yeah. Wow. All three. Okay, let's wow. get that. There's still some in the hose. Yeah, the that's just dry. Did it completely empty it, Duck? Yeah, all three. Oh, superb. That's ball and dry. Hang on, sorry, let me just get rid of this. Number oh, two is ball and dry. Oh, I'll Photoshop that. Yeah. And number three is ball and dry. All three. What we learned is that you don't really earn the endurance record on the field. The day we flew the endurance record, we could have given the plane to any novice pilot and they would have the record. You really earn the record on the workbench. It starts with a good design and you follow that with the lightest build possible. We feel we've taken the two-cycle glow fuel engine pretty much to its limit. The next truly significant record breaking will be done with more advanced technology perhaps a four-cycle engine burning naphtha, gasoline, or some other energy-dense fuel. Thanks for watching.